Tonight, a special edition of Richard French Live. First, professional bullies. Miami Dolphin leaves the team after a teammate's taunting goes too far. However, most of the teammates in the Dolphins support Richie Incognito, not Jonathan Martin. We will go behind the headlines of the saga playing out in South Florida. And then the football injuries that never heal. Another NFL Hall of Famer diagnosed with brain damage he got on the field damage typically ends with violence and death. So what can and really ought to be done? And then later, we switch gears. 75 years ago, Kristallnacht, or the night of broken glass in Germany, where Nazis made the anti-Semitic intentions plain. And now in 2013, we learn Nazism on the rise or on the rebound in Europe. And we'll show you in our special report on RFL just how. Stay with us. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I am Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Friday, November 8th. Our focus on some very different and very important subjects here. First off, football. We are in about to begin the second half of the NFL season, but not everybody's focusing on the standings um, or even playoff positioning. That's because of the bizarre story that is lifting the curtain on both locker room life in the NFL and the questions of where should the lines be drawn. I'm sure by now you know the story. Second-year offensive tackle Jonathan Martin left the team suddenly after what he says was bullying at the hands of, among others, veteran guard Richie Incognito. Bullying the Dolphins apparently knew about and may have even encouraged the story continues to develop seemingly by the hour. But we do have some insight on the kinds of bullying that Martin was subjected to. NFL insider reporter Adam Schefter reporting that Incognito left this voicemail for Martin. And I will paraphrase here because I can't say some of the stuff on TV. Hey, what's up, you half N-word, you piece of another expletive. I saw you on Twitter. You've been apparently training 10 weeks. I want to again inject the expletive into your expletive mouth. He went on to say that he will slap again. More language I can't say. And he will slap you and your mother across the face. Laughter online. And finally, in the same voicemail, he said, you're still a rookie. I will kill you. Now, as we said, the Dolphins may have known and may have encouraged, if not that exact behavior, Richie Incognito apparently toughening up in many ways the aforementioned Mr. Martin. And after Martin left the team and his agent complained to the Dolphins' general manager, Jeff Ireland, the GM's response apparently was that Martin should physically confront Incognito, and Ireland specifically mentioned that Martin should slug Incognito in the mouth. Well, that push for toughness comes amid reports that yet another NFL legend, known for his toughness and his ability to play through pain, the Hall of Famer has become less, well, let's just say less of what he was from the player we remembered on the field. He is showing signs of brain damage. I speak of none other than the great Tony Dorsett. Cowboy running back and, as I said, Hall of Famer diagnosed now with CTE, deposits in the brain that result from head trauma and repeated concussions. And that may have led here to several high-profile NFL suicides in recent years. Dorsett, as we know, far from alone. Also diagnosed this week, legendary Giants defensive end Leonard Marshall, a member of the 87 and 91 Super Bowl champion teams. And for more on both subjects, we are pleased to turn to a name very familiar to local football fans, Howard Cross, former tight end for the New York football Giants from 89 to 2001. Super Bowl champ and a former broadcaster as well. Uh, Howard, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you very much. Hey, no problem, Richard. You know, I'm curious your perspective because, you know, in the day and age we live in where you see everything 24-7 coverage, one of the few places that's off limits to fans and general public is the locker room. But so much of this story with Incognito and Martin and what we're hearing from guys in the Dolphins and from former and current players around the league, um, it's kind of you have to be there to understand. It's a different world with a different set of rules. You live the life from everything you've heard, and this is, looks like it's going to go to a, a court here. Uh, what's been your take? I would think that if, if you were really interested in what's going on, I would think you would st take a step back and really look at what's happening. Um, and, I, and I don't know the whole situation. You're playing in a sport where your objective is to break the will of, an, of another person constantly. You're going out to defeat another man with your physical being, your personal being. You want to overpower that person. And this kid was on a team that did that. 
um, not just a team that did that outwardly, but just did it. The fact that he didn't stand up for himself and didn't fight back, I don't want to turn this into a bashing Jonathan moment, but I want to point out the fact that it's a little odd. It's a little odd that he saved every email. He saved every voicemail. He, re he was repeating this to people outside of the locker room when he never asked for help from people inside of his locker room. If I did, and I know they're not comparable here, but if you'd said somebody's not pulling their weight and they either need to either get with a program or get off the ship, I get it. But he said that's not what happened to him, and more specifically, other people said that wouldn't happen in our locker room. It would have never gone that far. I guess there's different sets of rules depending on different locker rooms you're in, different veteran leadership, different coaches that are invested maybe in the offensive line, defensive line, whatever that position coach is going to do here. Mm -hmm. This one just seemed to be from the outside, and I'm talking from what NFL people say, it never would have happened like this in our locker room. Something broke down in the system in Miami. I'm going to tell you what's really happening in my view. I believe that, again, there's a major issue in America in bullying. There are kids taking their lives all over the country for different reasons, for God knows that they're too big, they're too little, they're black, they're white, their, their sexual preference, their religious preference. And I think kids are being bullied by different groups of people, and it's a, it's a major issue. The, the, the nation at large is trying to look to the NFL to set a standard. Uh, this kid just happened to file a case at the right time in history, and that's the truth. Uh, the reality of it is that almost in every locker room and every, almost any way of life that I know, if someone's bothering you too much, as men, you usually say, hey, back off. And if someone watches you or witnesses something that's not in the right, uh, there will be somebody who will stand up and say, hey, back off. Fair enough, Howard. Um, we saw the sad news, and we played the clip earlier from Tony Dorsett talking about where he is right now. Uh, one of your former teammates, Leonard Marshall, um, also um, relating to CTE and that. We spoke to an old teammate of yours um, a little while ago, Harry Carson, and he made it clear from his generation, what he's seen in some of his former teammates. Um, and, and he said for him, he's got a son, and he said, you know what, I told him, even though he had a ride at a major D1 program, there'd be a problem in their relationship if the kid put on the helmet and pads and played at that level. You're a dad yourself. Knowing what you know and playing through your generation like you do, do you share some of the same concerns as Harry Carson that what lies ahead, not just for you, but also would you have second thoughts about your kid playing? No, actually, I don't, I don't have the same thoughts. I, I do take a different view of, of the head injury thing. I think it is terrible. I think that there are a lot of guys that, that do suffer, but if there are thousands and thousands of guys, 10 or 12 guys are just part of the pool, and we have a lot of research that needs to be done to prove what's going on, and not only to prove what's going on, to prove how, do we, how we can prevent what's going on. Uh, my son plays football now. He's a very uh, an, you know, animated, excited player. Um, no concussions, thank God. But he does play with his head out of the game. I think there was an era and a time when guys led with their head and they, they put their head in as a weapon or a battering ram trying to make a point in the game. I think now that we know that those injuries are long lasting, we're going to look at them. I believe there are a lot of guys that are suffering. I do believe there are a lot of guys that are injured. And I, my heart, my prayers go out to them. But at the same time, we enjoyed the game and we understood what we were getting ourselves involved in, and we loved it. Um, it's going to be a, a tough road to hold. I don't know how to explain it other than if you knew this was going to happen to you, would you have still done it? And I'd hate to say it, but I believe a lot of guys would say yes.